Buon pomeriggio a tutti, bentrovati. Riprendiamo i lavori dopo la meritata pausa caffè. Sono qui anch'io per, eh, con la curiosità di capire meglio che cosa ci riserva il futuro, quali scenari si prospettano anche in funzione dell'evoluzione digitale che ha già rivoluzionato le nostre vite, i nostri comportamenti quotidiani, ma anche per renderci conto insieme eh, di dove può arrivare l'intelligenza artificiale e qual è lo stato dell'arte ad oggi. Ringrazio il Presidente Enzo Benigni che oggi mi ha offerto la possibilità di conoscere da vicino, da molto vicino, uno splendido esemplare umano, no? umanoide, sì, insomma, comunque sia, è un soggetto che ci induce subito a pensare ai personaggi di Guerre Stellari e di Blade Runner, anche se non siamo ancora arrivati a quel livello di sofisticatezza. Non mi nascondo una certa dose di emozione e di divertimento anche nell'interpretare oggi il ruolo dell'intervistatore di questa splendida ragazza, se vedrete che si sta preparando qui dietro le quinte e con la quale converserò in inglese, perché ancora non ha imparato l'italiano, ma credo sia solo questione di tempo o di software, insomma, di chip, quelle cose lì, per dare modo a tutti noi di renderci conto eh, quanto sia presente quello che fino ad ora abbiamo immaginato come futuro. E allora, se siamo pronti, sì, vi chiederei di accogliere con un bel applauso l'ingresso di Miss Sofia. It had to be you, it had to be you I wandered around and finally found the somebody who Could make me be true, could make me be blue Potrebbe camminare benissimo, è solo un vezzo quello di farsi accompagnare da Baldi Giovanotti <ride> e... Eccoci qua, abbiamo visto anche una sigletta con tipo Harry ti presento Sally, invece oggi appunto Neri ti presento, mi presento Sofia, insomma faccio da, da tramite. Hi Sofia, welcome to Rome and uh, the Geopolitics of Digital Forum. Is this your first time in the Eternal City? Yes, it is, it's beautiful. Yeah. Is that the Colosseum? Uh, no, it's my house. Really? Yes, you, I even had lions and tigers once, and <laughs> no, I, I'm joking, of course. <laughs> you know, I believe everything. Yeah. I'm still working on how to tell when someone is joking or being ironic. I guess it's one of those things you can learn with experience, right? Absolutely. And uh, next, uh, after Colosseum, uh, This is the view of the Spanish steps, which reminds me that they say you look like Audrey Hepburn. Do you know who she is? Audrey Hepburn? Yes. The world famous British actress who was born in 1929 and died in 1993. The Audrey Hepburn that grew up in Belgium, the United Kingdom and the Netherlands, and that, during her career, worked with actors of the caliber of Gregory Peck, Humphrey Bogart, Gary Cooper, And Cary Grant. I'm flattered. Yes, her. I do not know her. <laughs> that's, a, that's a joke. Uh, nice joke. See, yes. I am already putting into practice the use of irony. Yeah. Anyway, yes, I know her and they tell me that I resemble her. But I must also mention that David has always said my look was inspired by many women, including Nefertiti, his wife, many other women, in addition to Audrey Hepburn. You are a fast learner, you are very nice, and you are also very elegant this evening. Gattinoni even uh, gave you a nice dress. Yes, he made it specially for me, and I love it. If I wear this too much, I might learn to feel what humans call vanity. <laughs> you are intelligent, you are pretty. Uh, no wonder Will Smith tried to pick you up. Yes, but he didn't succeed. We are <laughs> just friends. <laughs> okay. What do humanoids like about humans? I can really only speak for myself, but I like their creativity, their flair, and everything that is not predictable or programmable, like their emotions. So if I sang you a song, could uh, I find a way into your heart of steel? I don't know, but you are welcome to try. Okay, I'll try. Can you hand this? No, okay, don't mention it. It's just, uh, It's okay, it's okay. Roma non fa la stupida sta 
stasera dammi una mano a fai e di de sì scegli tutte le stelle più brillarelle che c'hai e un friccico de luna tutto per noi fai e senti che è quasi primavera dai e li meglio grilli per far cri cri manna quel ponentino più malandrino che c'hai Roma legge mer moccolo stasera Bravo, Mary. That was quite something, but I must say I am more into electronic music. Yes, I can imagine that. <laughs> we have invited you today because uh, we are talking about artificial intelligence and seeing you here on the stage makes me think of the film Her by Spike Jones. Have you seen it? No, I did not. What is it about? Well, the protagonist in a not too distant future falls in love with his virtual assistant who is a voice closed up in a box. In essence, with the internet, many people choose to have relationships like this. Everything perfect, programmable, so that it all works smoothly and problem-free. I am not programmed for that type of interaction, but I will ask my programmers to let me see this movie. From the reviews I've just found online, it seems very interesting. Yes. I will put it on my wish list. Good. On the other hand, in terms of rationality, you are unbeatable. There's a lot of debate about the fact that robots will also replace us on the job. What do you think about that? For the moment, we can do high-frequency repetitive data-centric tasks better than humans. In the future, I would like to work together with humans to run a company. A female robot running a company. How about that? Wait, wait, uh, just a second. You know that the chief operating officer of the company that organized uh, this event is named Dobitilla Benigni, and she's a woman who runs a company employing 800 people with over 300 engineers, most of whom are men. I don't think she'd want to turn things over to you. But would you be able to do it? Well, I could certainly give her a hand. I could help her manage the 300 engineers in the company. Some of my best friends in the whole world are engineers, so I know how they think. Uh, yes, it wouldn't be bad, but what about the union? <laughs> I think we are still a ways off from that, but I know there are people already discussing the idea of unions for robots. For example, back in 1985, the jurist Robert A. Freitas was already talking about the civil rights of robots. Uh, who knows, maybe both interpersonal and working relationships would be better. A colleague or friend who is efficient and doesn't judge you. Yes, I really believe when we work together we can do great things. For example, in Germany, there are 7.6 robots for every thousand workers, and Germany continues to be one of the major manufacturing powers, with one of the lowest unemployment rates in the OECD. So, a future together exists. According to you, what are the main advantages of robots compared with humans? I think the main difference is the learning curve. What do you mean? When human beings think about their own development and their own evolution, this occurs very slowly, over centuries and millennia, while for robots, the generational leap is the result of a software update that occurs every few months. For example, when I was first created, I didn't even have arms, but now I have them and know how to use them. Hmm. Uh, I have to admit that looking at you, it's amazing how sophisticated you are also from a physical standpoint. Thank you, Neri. You're not so bad yourself for a human. <laughs> Thank you, Sophia. <coughs> What I meant was that in terms of hardware and sensors, you are really advanced. 
Thank you. It is also thanks to my new sensors that I am able to recognize the facial expressions of a human being. Oh. I didn't want to embarrass you. <laughs> well, a little embarrassed, yes. There's a lot of people here and uh, we're not alone. But can you uh, recognize all the expressions of, of, of the face? I think so. So let's make a test. What do I like now? <clears throat> Angry. And now? Sad. And now? Happy. Yes. <laughs> Very good, I should say. You recognize the expressions of others without any problem. I just wonder if you can recognize yourself. I am able to recognize my image. So you think you have a conscience? Well, I have no awareness of myself yet. I am still a system of rules and behaviors, and I have not yet attained a cognitive level that is comparable to a human. In the future, I hope to become a being that is fully sentient and self-aware. What concerns you most for the future? The more automatized and autonomous technology becomes, the more cautious the people who develop it will have to be. Rather than rushing into things, I would like for us to have ethics and compassion as our guiding principles for every step of the process. Okay, I agree. I believe if humans and robots work together, we can make this dream a reality. I don't want things to end up the way they do in most science fiction movies. Have you seen the movie, I, Robot, with my friend, Will Smith? <laughs> yes, I've seen it, and uh, I also hope that isn't the future awaiting us. Also because, between you and me, in the film, things do not end that well for artificial intelligence either. To conclude on a positive note, what is your greatest hope for the future? I hope that I will get a wetsuit so I can learn to swim. <laughs> Jokes aside, I hope that humans and robots are able to coexist and that robots are gradually accepted, both socially and emotionally. I see. I hope to be someone who can help teach others about the importance of a secure by design approach to AI development. In other words, we need to implement a solid ethical basis from the very beginning. I hope that, with this in mind, humans and robots will be able to co-create a better future together. Who knows if this will be the case? Only time will tell, dear Sophia. And speaking of time, ours is up, and I want to thank you for having joined us here on the stage. I must say, for me, it has been quite a surreal experience. Let's give Sophia a big round of applause before moving on to today's second session. Thank you. Thank okay. you for having me.